You ever get those like big red spots on your chin that are like so deep in there that it's like on the bone and it just like freaking hurts but it's like not a pimple because you can't even pop it. Oh no, my other blemishes. People will know that I'm human now. I don't know why people say I have good skin. Anyways guys, it has been some time since I made a video. It's been kind of hard for me to get back into the swing of things since I got back from that mission trip which was awesome by the way. Uh, but since it has been a while, I figured we would do something extra cool today. We are making a lawnmower blade bayonet for a Mossberg 5. 500 short barrel, the smooth bore with the door persuader. I'm pretty sure this is just like the standard barrel that a 500 comes with. People on Instagram were like, oh wow, that wouldn't be very effective for stabbing. It's too wide. Was, was that your first hint or was it the fact that there's two inches of blade coming out past the muzzle. Maybe it's that there's like seven inches of blade underneath the gun. Nothing, nothing. All right, basically it is secondarily a stabbing weapon, but mostly it's supposed to be used. Basically you grab your shotgun like an ax and cleave through clay pigeons and stuff, you know. Jokes aside, obviously it is a very offensive attachment to your weapon. It's a nice thing to have around though, like in case you ever do need it for whatever reason. Other than that, you probably don't really need it if you're just like going hunting and stuff, but it's freaking cool. That is really the only reason that we need to build it. Uh, so let's build it. So we're starting out with a standard Mossberg 500. Got this custom pistol grip that I made out of some hickory. If you guys care to see how I did that, I would gladly show you. First things first though, safety check. Make sure the safety is on. Got no rounds in the tube. Got none in the barrel. The gun is safe. We are going to half cock the shotgun. And then from here, we can unscrew this bolt. Barrel comes out super easily. Go ahead and stick this in a clean, safe place. Now here's what we got to work with. As you can see, as much as you spin that bolt, it will not come out of that little holder. That is a little bit of a problem, but it is super easily fixed. As you can see here, when I turn the bolt, we got this weird little washer thing attached to it. As far as I can tell, this is just for convenience, making it so that the bolt and the barrel are one piece, so you don't gotta worry about little pieces getting lost. Thanks, but no thanks, Mossberg. We have to get rid of that. There's probably a tool for doing this. If there is, I don't know what it is. All I've done is take a little nail, bent a hook into it. You can probably use a little fish hook and I've grabbed it in these uh, needle nose vice grips and I'm going to hook it in between the teeth of that washer. And then from there, you can very easily start unscrewing that bolt. Easy peasy. So now that that's out of the way, here's the stuff we're actually gonna be making the bayonet out of. We got this lawnmower blade, this is going to be the blade. We got this one inch steel pipe, this is gonna go over the magazine tube for some extra stability, but the main connection point is going to be made out of this high quality piece of a machete. The reason I'm going with this as opposed to just some mild steel and why you also should go with something like this as opposed to mild steel is because this piece has to be as thin as possible while still being very, very strong, like at least strong enough that you can't even really bend it with your own hands. Doesn't really have to be a machete, but as long as it is some high carbon hardened tempered steel, you should be good. All right, so now we're going to prepare the lawnmower blade for cutting. I've lined up this edge of the little holder piece with this edge of this little flower right here. Now we make our mark two and a half inches from that edge right there. Then I'm gonna get a little artistic. I'm gonna come up this way in no particular angle. Shoot out this way to get a little extra blade length and a little like this, just so I don't have any sharp edges pointing straight towards my hand. All right, now if we come over here a little bit, we're really just gonna be cutting along this line right here just to get rid of this bent part. And I'm also going to be cutting off this little bevel right here. I want that sort of combat knife point. Can't really see it super well right now because I'm just using a pencil, but I'll be able to see it while I'm cutting. All right, now I'm gonna make an angled cut here and a straight cut here. You'll see why in a second.
beyond any of you. Alright, so I cut the pipe slanted like that so I could get this perfect match up with this thing. Look, at it just looks so good. Alright, now we're gonna weld that pipe to the blade, making sure to keep it aligned as best as we possibly can. All right, I'm clearly out of practice. I'm pretty sure that'll hold though. So now I'm going to start shaping the tip of the blade. Why confuse them with the truth? All right, so I did some shaping on the back right here. I cut this little thing out right here. I don't really know why, I just think it looks better. Now I'm gonna put a rough bevel here and probably a little bit right here and also here. All right, so that's fitting super good. Now we're gonna drill our first hole into the machete blade. And for the love of gosh, if you're using a drill press, make sure you clamp down your workpiece. If you wanna know why, go ahead and check out my self-stitching video. It's pretty long, so make sure you grab yourself some snacks, all right? Maybe a Hot Pocket, a toaster strudel, some lasagna, maybe a cup of spaghetti sauce to wash it down. Whatever you want, just get ready for a very relaxing experience. I know, it's just one plank from the best way. This is some hardened steel, so make sure you use a liberal amount of oil. Here we go. A little more oil. What the heck? Suddenly I remember why I hate drilling through hardened steel. Dang it, I had the drill press set to 420. I get it, you vape. All right, the bolt should be able to fit through. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> oh, drill bit. It's time for dinner. Ah, <laughs> oh, drill bit. Can I play with drill bit a little longer? Oh, uh, drill bit, please listen. You know how your drill bit gets when you drill bit. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Are you arguing with your drill bit? Again? No, sir. That's what I thought. Get inside the house. <sighs> See you, drill bit. Hey, drill bit. Why is your drill bit always so mad? Oh, well, he's not my real drill bit. My real drill bit left when I was still a 1 16th. He's just my step drill bit. <laughs> And that is totally, actually, how they got their name. So step drill bits are absolutely perfect for when you only have a 3 8 inch drill bit and a half inch drill bit and you need something sort of in between. Chances are these guys got what you're looking for. All right, now after a bunch of really careful measurements, this is the shape that I've come out with. Everything that has an X on it is stuff that I'm gonna be cutting away, and I'm still not even really sure if this is gonna fit, but there's only one way to find out. This is gonna be super complicated to cut out. Time to probably mess up.
Now I've got to cut a line up the center of this so I can saddle it on the blade. All right, so now we just, whoa, what the? That is, <laughs> that is like weirdly perfect. That barely ever happens. <laughs> All right, well, I'll take it. All right, so I'm gonna put this back on the gun with this piece on it now so that I can get it in the perfect position to do a little spot weld. Now I'm just gonna do a couple of really quick little spot welds right here and on the other side, same spot. I don't wanna do very much welding at all on here because I don't wanna risk the barrel heating up and possibly ruining the temper of it. This is just to make sure that I have this piece in the exact perfect position that it needs to be. So just a quick zap on both sides, take it off and do the rest of the welds. All right, now I take this off. And clean this up and complete the welds. This is harder than the regular welding that I do because this piece is so thin compared to this. So getting the settings right so you don't melt through this piece while you're trying to just get it to barely connect to this one is really difficult. Sweet, I'm almost done. I just gotta clean some stuff up with this uh, flap disc and that should be it. You're going to do this because I know you can. So I put it up on this little pipe to paint it and I just realized that you could use this as a pretty cool little baby halberd if you didn't have it attached to your shotgun. Alright, now here's how we put it on. First, you put it onto the magazine tube, slide the barrel into the receiver, put that little thing right there, and slide it all back, put your bolt in tight as you can and there you go that is freaking cool well i hope you guys enjoyed it i would have loved to have heat treated this thing so i could get a razor sharp edge on it but i actually have to edit and upload this video all tonight because today is the day i announced the winner of the duck drawing competition which is <gasps> this guy. Congratulations guy for winning the custom built cajon with that sick duck. Just like the last guy that won the saw blade tomahawk, all you gotta do is put your hoodie back on or t-shirt or whatever it was that you had, I don't really remember. Pose with another piece of paper, only on this one write down your address on it instead of a duck. Uh, and don't put it on Instagram. Email it to me, zednotalpha at gmail.com. This thing is so cool, I love this. Uh, anyways guys, that's all I got for today, so thank you all very much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye. There we go.